Welcome to Bus of Speakers. I'm Kush. And I'm Alex. And today we're viewing Emperor of Sand by Mastodon. So Mastodon are an icon iconic progressive metal group. And I I wanna say so my experience with Mastodon is pretty interesting. So I first listened to Leviathan a few I wanna say like maybe seven, eight years ago. And I love right. that album. I love Leviathan. It's probably one of my favorite progressive metal albums to date. And I just fell in love with them. I want to, but like, so I want to say more recently, they've, they've been hinting at this more pop metal sort of vibe. And you can, yeah, you can even tell in some of the songs on this album, they've been hinting at that. But albums like Remission, Crack the Sky, Blood Mountain, The Hunter, just fantastic albums. Great progressive metal pieces. Um, Emperor of Sand, I was excited to hear this, but I was also hesitant because The Hunter and Once More Around the Sun were both kind of pop metal. Some... They're pop metal. Yeah, pop they, metal. they had some pop metal elements to them, which I was worried about because I missed the just raw progressive vibe of Mastodon. And while mm. the while from at least for me, the pop metal is still on here, I think they still bring back that that heavy progressiveness that they had originally. Yeah, uh, uh, just to say, considering I'm such a pop fan, pop metal is like one of the best genre combinations I could ever hope for. I know a lot of metal fans are probably against that term, just because they're against pop music, because they're quite far different parts of the spectrum. But when I see it, a lot of rock music and a lot of metal music can make pop versions of them quite easily like choruses can still be extremely catchy in verses the sun and uh the hunter were very pop informed albums compared to correct the sky and blood mountain which are all the albums i've heard by them yeah so just to hear what they do here i love mastodon i mean after discovering how much i love metal from bands like metallica iron maiden megadeth for some reason i delved into mastodon randomly enjoyable metal bands I've ever heard. Crack the Sky. That album, that album changed my life. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I mean, people who say that, it's probably not ever true. It just means, like, they really had some great experiences with the album. But the song, The Last Baron, man, that song is such a trip. 13 minutes, and it goes right into it. Right into the hard-hitting choruses and verses. That song is a trip. The whole album is. So, as impactful on me as that song on here, but I have to say, they're really going back to the sort of Blood Mountain era, because Blood Mountain probably had more... Yeah, uh, how do you say that? Leafalon? Which one? Leviathan? The one that... Yeah, that one. So I've not heard that one. That's probably their, I would say, their best album. But uh, Blood Mountain probably hinted at a more pop direction. Yeah. Slightly. Uh, that, that, and it, it did really worry Albums me. Albums close to that one. Closest to that one in terms of sound, Blood yeah. Mountain. So, one thing I noticed on here, I'm pretty sure they use just, like, random metal name generator for some of these songs, like Scorpion <laughs> Breath and Jaguar God. Like... So, maybe... Like they did, it it had the the song title had nothing to do with the actual lyrics in the song. For some of them. Well, show yourself. We should probably get onto that first, since some people are calling that the worst Mastodon song ever. I will. I will agree with that. Is. I will agree with that. I I don't because I think it's just forget it's by Mastodon. And I know people can't do that if they're listening to Mastodon. You know, they're listening because they want to hear Mastodon. But I know it's clean vocal the whole way. I know that it almost feels like a weird pop punk song in some way. But I like it. It, it sounds as if they were trying to make a catchy hit for the album, like Curl of the Burl or The Motherload on the last two albums, which is probably the two catchiest songs. And it's like not as good as those two. Oh, I just don't get the big deal about it. Well, what did you think? I hate the song. Um, I like aspects to it. I think they do have a good sound. Like, 
the it goes to a metal esque style that what they're good at and yeah i just think the pop punk doesn't fit this album at all because every other song on here is just a heavy like crunchy guitars and heavy drums and just eclectic bass and it's just just getting punched in the face by like a good metal album that one song is just out of nowhere doesn't really fit the vibe and it kind of at least for me it just sounded like a sellout song as opposed to some of the other songs on here which are just really really just great music if they ever made a sellout song it began with the you know half the songs of the hunter i don't see this as like starting anything pop related here's the thing though people are outraged by this they're saying like this is like mastodon betraying them uh, similar to what you're saying or i, I wouldn't whatever. say that far. i just i can't that far but a lot of people are saying that and i just can't imagine hate out of this i can't imagine getting this offended by this song it's beyond the realms of my understanding to get annoyed by this song it's just a d i mean when i first heard this album i wasn't even aware that that was a it's a bit different but you know i like the i'm pretty sure they have two different vocalists uh they have a very clean... three i know but they have a, like a main guy who's a quite murky and raw who is extremely good old guy who i think emerged in the pop metal days who i think is actually their lead guitarist or yeah. bass player i'm not too 100 percent sure i know that bill kill leher is their like rhythm guitarist who only does background vocals yeah so um but, the lead vocalist Brand, is Br Brand Daler. the murky raw one yeah uh He's a he's amazing to me. He's a metal legend already to me. Yeah, Brand Daler is probably the, the is their the murky vocalist, and their more singer yeah. vocalist is Brent Hins. Yeah, but that's all, the guy. They all do Bill vocals. Bill Kaleller is the at different points in the album. He's like the backing vocalist, and they've got a good drummer as well. Some of these guys were actually in the um, deathcore band today is the day by the way like two of them back in 2000 or so before Mastodon that's kind of a cool we go into any more songs I want to say concerning Mastodon I love the sound of this band almost to a fault the sound of them the raw murky guitars the whole just it's a weird vibe it's sludgy it's it's messy it's cluttered. People are complaining about the production, that it's not clear. But it sounds so thick and juicy to me. To the point where they could have a really weak song. And it still sounds so good to me. It's like ear candy. For you, but... I sound like a stupid fanboy saying this, but... Honestly, the, it, it, the sound of these songs, the production that they... So good, it like makes up for any weaker tracks. So for me, the best songs were, my two favorite were Roots Remain and Andromeda. I don't know. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, I like those two as well. Roots Remain starts off with this droney intro with like the high reverb on the guitars. Everything is just so well done. And then it goes from aggressive to toned down. Then it becomes really slow and yeah. they end with a piano. And that song was just a ride the entire way through. And the song... I wasn't actually sure if that was a piano. I thought it might have been played very, very subtly. I don't know. Maybe I. I, I know I... that acoustic guitar and piano strings are quite similar if you actually like, analyze them together. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, but uh, I, I just thought it was a piano. Just when I listened to it's it, it's probably a piano. To be honest, uh, the next song I loved is Andromeda. The riff is yeah, absolutely mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing yeah. riff on that song. Each, like... One thing I noticed is that all these songs flow really well, minus the one the one song we talked about earlier, but every other yeah. song flows really well after each other because they have a good continuous sound through them. But this, this song was just so heavy, so, like, burdening on you. Um... There were some really dark lyrics on the song. Like, he's talking about, like, wishing time would go faster and just it never ends. So he sounds like he's slightly suicidal. And towards the end, they have this just the these pig squeals, almost pig squeals, I want to say. And yeah, there's like a creepy menace to the song, I'd say. That song, 
I don't know. I'm I'm a big fan of death metal and black metal, so I'm I like the screaming vocals they have at the end of this, and I was just in in love with this song. My two favorites were probably Steam Breaver and Jaguar God, which I'm pretty sure are like the two. I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure Steam Breaver was at least five minutes long, and my God, the guitar like fuzz feedback at the start of the song is like. And I say that a lot. I must be lucky to go to musical heaven so often, but uh, I can see like guitar feedback annoying other people, but it's great to me because polished production when it's a sludge progressive metal band like this, it doesn't really fit for me. I know show yourself a kind of clean production. I'd have to say the first three songs they weren't highlights to me as like not really one of their best but it was kind of more slower pace which worked in their favor and uh and i'm pretty sure you could agree that jaguar god was one hell of a song as well the last song it started off with an acoustic ballad goes into these just guttural screams the electric guitar the guitar solo everything that that song is just gorgeous uh oh, Jaguar God, yeah. I love this. I love uh, this album. Uh, I'm just upset that they had yeah, that um, one. If they didn't have that one song on there, this would be a contender for one of my favorite albums so far. I, I just can't imagine getting annoyed by that song. It doesn't... Alex, you don't understand. It doesn't annoy me. It's I don't, not I'm, Mastodon. I... This is not the Mastodon I love. Oh, you have to be joking saying that. That's exactly what the fanboy is. <laughs> like, no, I'm this glad is not what I want from you, Mastodon. Get I I'm glad yeah. they're experimenting. It just didn't sound good to me. I mean, I, I, I appreciate their experimenting and trying new things, but it wasn't for me. I just have to say that uh, Jaguar God is as close to, like, from a crack the sky as we're gonna get and through as you were saying and uh it's so starkly different from actually anything i've ever heard a mastodon do before because all of their other longer songs they like start off really hardcore and heavy uh, i'm not too sure about the cesar on the last baron i think that started off with some keyboards and went into it all the way through it starts off with them um, quietly sending over some acoustic guitar chords and then just goes progressive the whole way through builds up with intensity i'd have to say that's probably the one of the best metal songs i've heard and if not this decade and i know mastodon probably made some other ones that this decade as well that i really liked it's a good album uh, a really another good favorite album. for me was uh word to the wise just quickly that was another just exactly what I love from Mastodon. Fast-paced, hard-hitting riffs. Yeah, It's weird how their catchier parts of their songs are just when they slow down. Don't you think that's a bit weird? Like, that's complete opposite to anyone else. Like, pop songs, the catchier parts are when it speeds up in the chorus, kind of. But I think with, the, with metal, it's already so fast and so aggressive that when they slow it down, it's easier for us to maybe take in. Actually, closer to the pace that pop has during its choruses anyway. Like, they meet in the middle, yeah. uh, pace-wise. So that's interesting. And, uh, yeah, Word to the Wise is another favourite. The drumming is absolutely mental on that. Man, I, I just... I, I feel like a dumb fanboy, but... This is exactly just... Um, I was slightly worried because I was getting negative reactions from, from uh, the singles. Like, I think people didn't like Sultan's Curse as well. They thought that was a bit generic. And it is a bit atypical, but considering it's the first new Mastodon song I've heard in f over three years, or nearly three years, I just loved it, and the production is so good, so... Uh, another problem I had throughout this album... Right. What... I, I think something's up with their mixing, because the vocals were always slightly muffled to me when I was listening to it. Mm. Maybe it was just I was on I Spotify, I don't know. About, uh, yeah. People have been complaining about Brant, uh, the 
raw murky vocalist saying that he's going much further away from actually sinning and he's turning into a almost death metal vocalist of some songs like he's becoming very 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 dodgy sounding i wouldn't go that far i don't mind him though i love him i like his vocals on this but i think it was just the mixing was weird because sometimes the instrumentals would like kind of overshine especially on sultan's curse and show yourself both um i noticed that but maybe that's yeah. just maybe that's just because i was listening through it i got shitty headphones or something but um <laughs> i don't know i have this so is it nice cd copy to be fair pre-ordered this a while ago just because i love mastodon man so alex what would you rate this yeah i love mastodon <laughs> i think i've said that about <laughs> 20 times but <laughs> but i'm gonna give it 8.5 out of 10. wow that's um a, a big some score. songs were sl- well, that i'll be playing a lot of uh times this year probably my favorite metal album this year i, I can't remember what i rated pain of salvation i think it was quite high as well but i don't think it was this high sounds great to me even the mixing that you complained about there as an extension of how much i like the production i didn't mind it vocals are great throughout i did not mind show yourself which is probably what's making people rate this lower in general anything stopping me is I didn't think it had many of their best songs on here. It had a lot of the really great songs, had a lot of really good ones. But even Once More Around the Sun and The Hunter, I'd say it had some of their best songs on it, like at least three each. The Hunter had Curls the Burl Black Ton. Plenty of great songs. Once More Around the Sun had um, uh, The Mother Load, High Road, uh, Halloween, and. Uh, this has Jaguar God and uh, uh, Steam Breaver. They're probably the only two songs I call their two bit. So for that, maybe they're not aiming a bit too low. It's really consistent, but it doesn't have enough highlights to become a 10 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. Which I'll have to say, Crack the Sky is a 10 out of 10 album for me. Just so you know. So, for me- so I really love this band. Yeah, I, I am also the one of the biggest Mastodon fans. Um, We're both uh, number one and two members in the Mastodon <laughs> fan club, guaranteed. We're going we're gonna to ang- make a lot of people angry by saying that. Um, <laughs> no, in the, in the, the comments are like, no, you... I'm the biggest Mastodon fan. No, that's but me. Then we'll like them and... <laughs> but then we'll like them and then say, maybe you are. We weren't considering you. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give this uh, ba- uh, this band this album a seven point five, just because of a few kinks. I I did not like the attempt at the pop rock kind of style. But yeah, pop punk. Uh, sorry, pop punk. Yeah. Uh, whatever it is. But they have I think Andromeda and I think Roots Remain are some of their best some of the best songs in the last couple albums they released. I I don't know I Jaguar got as well. I am. A huge mass on fan, so maybe I'm slightly biased by giving it a higher review than that, or giving it 7.5. But there were, and maybe the production, and also the production was a little off with the, for me at least, the muffled sound. But overall, yeah. I I think it was a solid, solid progressive metal piece. Just a very, very fun album, very aggressive, very heavy, very just just everything you would want from a progressive metal album. Yeah, they, everything you want. They didn't. They didn't. Straight, they right. didn't shortcut it. That's what it did. I'm saying. They didn't shortcut it at all. Hmm. Well, I, I don't know what that. Was streamlining anything. Their sound. I, I'm just really happy with this album. It's really good. Same. Is it a must listen? It's uh, a, maybe. If you're a metal if, fan, definitely. If if you're metal, if you like metal, if you like woolly mammoths and mastodons, check it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for thanks for listening to Bust the Speakers. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Let us know how you feel about the album in the comments below. Check out some of our other videos and check us out on social media.